Hello and welcome back to another video here at Pragmatic Works. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. My name is Mitchell Pearson and today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the stored procedure activity. And of course, we're going to be picking right back up where we left off in the last video in this series, which was kind of how to build that end-to-end -end example in some ways not fully baked out that data-driven pipeline, right? So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to pick right back up with the pipeline that we had before. Now there is going to be a little bit of preliminary setup here as we're getting started. So let me jump over to Management Studio. Uh, what I did is I went ahead and created a table, a table that's in my database. Now you, of course, if you want to follow along with this example, you're going to need your own database, whether that's in Azure or whether it's an on-prem database, either one is fine. But I went ahead and I created this table, very simple, very simple, kind of like a control table with a couple of columns, right? File name, last modified date, record insert date. Last modified date being the last modified date of the file that I'm going to be inserting here into this, um, into this table. And then I have a very basic stored procedure where I'm going to be able to pass in, and this is what I want to show you in this demo. I want to be able to pass in the file name, the modified date and the record insert date, right? I want to be able to pass that information in from Azure Synapse Analytics into my database, into my control table. Now, a real control table, as you know, and a more baked out, fully fleshed out ETL design pattern, you would have a lot more information in this table where you update the status, where you can go back and reconcile the files and see if all the files were, you know, all the records were loaded. Lots of things we could do with this, but this is going to be the basics here, right? This is going to be the fundamentals. So I will put uh, these scripts in a download link in the description below in the video. So go to the description, find the download link. You'll be able to have both the create table script and the store procedure script if you want to follow along, but you do need to have your own database, right? All right. So with no further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to jump back over to ASA We've created our object. I created the table already. I created the store procedure. Now I need to create a data set. Before I can create the data set though, uh, actually you don't even need the data set for this because it's a store procedure. Now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but I need a link service, right? I need a link service that's going to point to that database. So I'm going to go over to manage. Under the manage hub, I'll go to link services and I'm going to go ahead and create a link service to my Azure SQL database. So the database I just showed you for me was my Azure SQL database, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do new link service. I'll search for Azure SQL database here. Click on that. Give it a name, Azure SQL. I always like to give it a name that to me is intuitive of where it's at. So it's in Azure. What is the connector type? It's SQL. And then usually if you want, you can put like the server and the database name. I'm just going to stick with the database name here to keep it simple. And I'll go with Adventure Works. I'm going to go with my regular Azure integration runtime. I'm going to enter mine manually because it might actually be in a different subscription than the one that I'm in. And so let me scroll down a little bit here. And I'm going to do pragmatic works public dot database dot windows dot net. Again, you would be connecting to your Azure SQL database, not mine. I'm going to type in the name of my database here. Adventure Works. SQL authentication is going to be good. Now, if you've taken some of my other Azure videos on YouTube, you've probably seen me use this connection before. So PW student, and then the password is PW five T U D three N T. So if you want to run this with my store procedure on my table, technically you can, right? Technically you can. Um, I'm assuming, that this connection has write permissions. We'll find out very soon. Uh, we'll do test connection. Connection successful. If it doesn't, I'll come back and put in my admin stuff. In fact, I'm just going to put in my admin stuff. I'll put in my admin account. There we go. I feel more comfortable with that. So test successful. You can't see it there, but it's successful. It connected. It's green. I'm going to go ahead and click create right there at the bottom. And there we go. So we have our link service. That's really the part that's necessary here. 
So what I'm going to do now is go back over to my pipeline, open up the pipeline from the previous video, right? That was the for each activity, the previous one in this series. And if you want to just real quick refresher of what we're doing, the get metadata activity is going to a folder that's inside of, it's going to a folder that's inside of my data lake and it's getting all the files that are in that folder, right? So that's what we did in the previous video. And then in the previous video, we showed how the for each activity, you pass in all of the items that was output from the get metadata activity. And the for each activity is going to loop over those items and perform a set of activities on each one. So how do we reference those individual items? I've talked about that again in the last video, but I'll have to show it again here. So what I'm gonna do is go into this for each activity we can now get rid of the wait activity that we were using for demo purposes. And of course, we're going to replace that with the stored procedure right there. That's under the general category. Now, under settings, I need to choose my link service. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the link service that I just created. And I know that in that one right there, I have a store procedure that I already created, maybe, Let's see if I can remember what I called it. Ah, okay, insert last modified. There we go. Let's search for that. There we go. All right, so we're going to use this one right here. Now, I noticed that maybe there's another one that I normally do when I'm doing this demo because I have a couple, a few different flavors of this. This one has both the last modified date and it has the record insert date. But the way that we're currently getting the list of files, it's not going to actually have the last modified date, right? Um, so that's important to know because if we run this again, in fact, let me go back to monitoring and let's see if we can go back about 30 days. And if we go back to debug and we go back about 30 days again and we refresh that, hopefully it's not wiped out. You know what? We'll just go ahead and run it. So let me go back over here to our pipeline and I'm going to run this so you can see it. I'm going to turn on a breakpoint so we can just see the results of this and I'm going to hit debug. The only thing that get metadata is going to return for us when we're getting the child items from a folder is it's going to return the file name and the type of that file, right? So if we go down here and we look at the output, let's wait for that to get done. And I look at the JSON output right here, you'll notice that the child items only returns the name and the type. We took a look at that in the last video. So if I wanted to get more information about the file, what I would actually have to do, interestingly enough, is when I loop over and I get the first file name from this array, I can pass that file name into another, inside the for each activity, I can pass the name of that file into a get metadata activity that goes to the data lake and brings back all the metadata about that one file, right? So this is where I would, inside my for each activity, have a dynamic data set where I can pass that file name in and I could return all the information about the file and then I could pass that into the stored procedure. So it's an extra step, but that's how you would do that. So my stored procedure is actually looking for the last modified date, but we don't have it because of what child items returns. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. Let me turn off the breakpoint. It's a little bit of a wonky experience. And then I'll go back in here. So again, what I would do if you wanted to kind of extend this out a little bit is I'd use the get metadata activity here and say, all right, take the current item. And I don't think in this series, this YouTube series, we've gotten into like dynamic data sets. I don't know if I've created one. Yeah, I have not. These are just basic data sets with no parameters on them. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of that right now. Maybe that'll be a future video in this series. Maybe the next one, that would be actually really good to come back and revisit that now that I'm thinking about it. But either way, um, I would just parameterize a data set so I can pass the file name in same way we're about to do with the store procedure, exact same process. Um, and then I can return from the get metadata, the output, which would be the last modified and the other details about those files. 
What we're going to do though, let's refocus for a moment. We're going to refocus on the store procedure. We have a list of files that's being generated by the Git metadata activity. We want to put all of those file names into our table so we know they exist. We know they need to be processed or what have you. So with the Git metadata activity, I'm going to go to settings um, with the store procedure rather, my apologies. And I'm going to import from this store procedure, I'm going to import all of the parameters. Now, if you remember, I showed you the script that I was using a moment ago. Um, these are the store, these are the parameters that I put on the store procedure uh, that's on my database, the one I just called. So what I want to do is say, all right, I'm going to pass in a value right here from my Synapse Analytics pipeline that is going to map to that parameter that's then going to get inserted into the table, right? So we have to set up the values over here. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to click on the value for the file name, click add dynamic content, and we're going to tell it that we want to grab the current item. So this is going to grab the current item. And from the current item, we talked about this in depth in the last video, we need to grab the name property, right? So remember in that child items array, each row has a name and a type. So we don't want to just grab the whole current item. We need to tell it which property we want to pull the value from. And so we want the value from the name that's going to return the name of the file for this iteration of the loop. So I'm going to grab the name and then go down to the bottom and click OK. I'm blocking that with the video, but that's just an OK button there. And then I'm going to grab the modified date and the record insert date. Now, if you had you know, some columns on here that were in your table that are going to be updated later, like when you actually process the file, and it's nullable, you can just treat it as null and you don't have to, you don't have to give it a property. What I'm going to do for both of these, just real quick, is I'm going to pass in the current date and time with the UTC now property. Um, so we'll just pass that in since we don't have the last modified date. But what I'll probably do, and I'm liking this idea, is in a future video, come back and talk about dynamic data sets where we can parameterize them and we can pass this value into that. So hold me accountable to that. Put that in the comments below. Mitchell, I want to see that and I'll make sure to make that happen. So now modified date, I'm going to go here. I am going to again, go ahead and click on add dynamic content. And when I come over here, we're going to go over to functions and under functions, we can go down to date functions and there's one in here called UTC now. And if I click on it, it'll add the UTC now right here and it's going to return the current date and time. So we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll click OK. I'm going to repeat that process for record insert date. So we'll do that again. Let me go to functions. Actually, I can just type in here. You can always search for a function too. click that and then click OK again. And so this is what the final result is going to look like. This is going to take the current name from the current row, which is, of course, inter Internet sales, whatever. And then we're going to have the current date twice. Now we could do a lot more with these expressions, of course, but we're keeping this video simple. But this is going to allow me to now take the information from that Git metadata activity and write that information into a table in my database, right? So this is how we can easily interact with our database tables using stored procedures. All right, so with that being done, if everything is set up correctly, we can now run it and then go do a test. In fact, before I do a test, let me go ahead and pull this up real quick. If I come over here and grab that table name, right? And I say select star from, let's go ahead and paste that in there. And we run that, we're going to get zero results. So you can see there is currently nothing that's in that table. So now I'm going to flip back over here and I am going to go ahead and run this. I'll debug it. I'll just run it in debug mode for testing. It does actually do it though it's you know the cool thing about debug is when you run it in debug you can kind of make changes to your pipeline without publishing those changes and you can test it out but it still does run it is going to still write the data to the database it still does everything that it would do if you had published it so work is being done it's just a little bit easier now there's a lot more files that were in that folder than i remember <laughs> I thought it was about three or four files, but we grabbed everything. So yeah, we got all those files there. Let's go see what they are, right? We should be able to go back over to Management Studio and run my code. And there you go, guys. We have all of those files, 11 files that were just entered into our table right now, UTC time. We could adjust that later. 
But that's it. That's how you run a store procedure right here inside of ASA. Not very difficult to do. Of course, I want to make sure at the end that I publish my work. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to check out our training at Pragmatic Works. We love doing training. We love what we do. We do live training events. We do boot camps. We do private training events. And of course, we have on-demand learning. All of those are different services that you can explore. And then uh, that's it. That's all we got. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.